Hey everyone, today I'm going to give you some first impressions on Gwendy's Final Task by Stephen King and Richard Chismar. As someone who hosts a Stephen King podcast, I blew through this, I finished it the week it came out, and I am currently going on vacation, so that episode of the podcast unfortunately won't be out for a little bit. So I just wanted to get some thoughts out on this, and this will be completely spoiler free. I will say if you have not read Gwendy's button box or Gwendy's magic feather. Those are obviously some things you would want to do before reading this book in particular, but for some context, you have Stephen King and Richard Chismar teaming up for the first and the third book, and Richard Chismar wrote Magic Feather on his own, so for me it kind of had a dip in quality in the middle there, but overall I've enjoyed this trilogy and what we've seen from Gwendy as a character goes to show you how much King enjoys this character, and it's something I've noticed, especially recently with a character like Holly Gibney, who appears in four of his novels and in a novella in the If It Bleeds collection. So Holly Gibney and Gwendy are obviously two recent characters that King has really loved and has wanted to return to. So for me, it's one of those things where, you know, you have a writer returning over and over again to a specific character, and you know there has to be a reason for it, especially with King, because he's written over 80 books now, that's including the collections of short stories and novellas, and it's just amazing to see what sticks with him. And obviously Richard Chismar had a hand in this one too, and I'm actually reading Chismar's Chasing the Boogeyman book right now. I had started that, and I paused it to read Gwendy's final task, and now I'm going back and hopefully finishing it before I leave on vacation. But the way that Gwendy's final task is framed, and hopefully this isn't too much of a spoiler because it's on the cover of the book, but there are ties to the Dark Tower, and you get so much more of that Stephen King lore in this one than I think you do even in the previous two books, and obviously with a character being named Richard Ferris, R.F., Randall Flagg, so on and so forth. The man with many, many, many names, so many that I have completely lost track of them. But we see how everything is sort of hitting this climax and coming together in a way that you know is just going to have this big, massive ending. And I think they pull it off because I'm someone who has been, I don't want to say super critical of King's endings, but it's definitely a hot topic for anyone who reads a lot of King. And in this instance, I really, really enjoyed the way that this concluded. So you have Gwendy and she's going out on this big final mission, essentially. You have the button box, you have all of these other factors at play. I will say, though, a little too much COVID talk for my liking, so there is that, but I think overall it really works, and the story actually takes place in 2026, so it's a little far in the future, and the fact that, you know, they were like, ah, COVID's still around. I'm like, no, we don't want that, Stephen King. Please don't predict our future, which... Uh, you know, we don't have to get too far into that. But overall, I think this book was well written. The character work continued to be great for Gwendy and how her character interacted with all of the other characters. I really, really enjoyed that. There were so many moments where I was just so invested in the story. I didn't want to put the book down. I'm honestly surprised it took me a few sittings to get through it, but just because I didn't have time to stay up all night reading it when I first started it. I think I did, you know, 50 pages here, another 100, and then throughout the day, one weekend, I just kind of sat and did the rest in little chunks. So I would read, you know, grab lunch, read, and it is one of King's books that is very easy to read. I think all three Gwendy's books have been this way, and it's not dense like The Stand or It. And even when King has books that are a breeze to get through, oftentimes most of them are much, much longer than any of the Gwendy's books. You know, Button Box is technically a novella, and then Magic Feather is just Chismar, and it's a little longer, but this one is definitely the longest, but I think it deserves that extra time that we get to spend with 
Gwendy in particular. You get tragedy, of course, because it is Stephen King, and Richard Chismar is obviously such a disciple of King, basically. He is someone who has followed King's work for a very long time, and I think the fact that the two of them got to work together on two of these three stories is just really great, and you can tell there's this enthusiasm there for Gwendy from both of them. So that is something I really enjoyed. So those are just some quick first impressions and I am eager to see what comes with Fairy Tale this September. But if you are into The Dark Tower, if you enjoy the lore of Derry, then definitely check out this series if you haven't yet. I'm not sure why you would have watched this whole video if you haven't read the books yet. But if you haven't, definitely do that. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That is all I have for you today. I will see you next time.